Shyama's lore, she was a friend of Rose's because she felt pity upon the poor girl being bullied. This was back in the warehouse. Shyama had just taken her second beating from the man when she looks up at the screen above her doorway and sees that he's in Rose's room. Next thing you know, the screen goes black and there's a loud gunshot. After that, she was drugged again. The last thing she remembers was the sweet, cold sting of a needle. She wakes up in the hospital, still half asleep, connected to heart monitors and a bunch of other weird hospital toys. Beep. 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 Her heart monitor steadily paced. Then, out of her hospital door window, she sees Rose walk by. Shayama wanted to call out, call for her friend, but it was too late. Rose was gone. She was in the hospital for about four other days before they released her. When she got home, she had seen on the news that there was a mass murder at the same hospital she had just gotten out of. She was concerned, worried. How come she wasn't part of it? It doesn't matter. She got lucky and survived. Thank God. A few days later, she's on her way to school when she sees on a TV the public giving Rose her new name, Blind Killer. Shyama was worried. She was scared to be wandering around with a murderer. I mean, she could have been anywhere, right? What if, what if I was her next victim? No, don't think like that. You, you got nothing to fear. You're, you're just a girl in middle school trying to get by. It's all fine. Right? That night, Shyama showed up at home and it was quiet. There were no siblings yelling. There were no parents arguing. It was quiet. The quiet was so loud it was hurting Shayama's ears. And she heard a faint giggle. <laughs> who, who are you? Shayama calls out into the distance. An old friend. I've come to reclaim what was mine. You didn't answer my question. Who are you? Don't you remember my voice? Though, it is different. Try on my frozen fear. It was blood killer. I was her next victim. And it was blurry. The, it all happened in so many past snippets of time. It, it's like, it's like it all went by a blur. All I remember is being thrown against a wall, waking up on the counter, bleeding out, looking down upon my body and seeing cuts and limbs missing. By that time I had passed out. I don't remember anything after that. But I do remember waking up in a cabin. It was cold in the cabin, but I felt better. I felt alive. I looked, I looked at myself, and I looked the same. I felt my face to see if anything had changed. It was all fine. Maybe it was just a weird coincidence. Maybe it was a dream. Oh yeah, I, I'm just dreaming. It's, it's all just a dream. I need to go. But why can't I move? Why is everything so dull? No, you're a strong girl. Get up. Shyama managed to push herself to her feet. Off the couch of this weird cabin she was sitting in was cold and quiet, a lot like her house back at home. 
but it was all just a dream, so it didn't matter anyways. She left the cabin, looking to see if she could find anything as to where she was, hoping to find a way out. It was just a forest. Cold, breezy, dark forest. It was definitely close to midnight now, though it's hard to keep time when you've been knocked out. But it's okay. We'll make it out. She just started walking, hoping to find somewhere to escape. That's when she saw it. She saw the same warehouse that was supposed to be burnt down by the blind killer. It was weird. I thought it was burnt, gone, ashes. It's whatever, let's go inside. And that's when I woke up. It was just a dream. Maybe I'm just going crazy due to the traumatic events. Let's go to school. Hey, Shayama. You look pale. How come you haven't been getting sleep? Juniper asks. It's nothing, Juniper. I just... It's a kidnapping that happened. It's taken <laughs> quite the toll on me. Yeah, me too. But, hey, it was all just an illusion. All just an illusion. Yeah. The same sentence was ringing. It was all just an illusion. Did Rose never exist? Was I just crazy? I, I need to see somebody. I need to talk to somebody. This, this supposed dream hallucination is all just getting to my head. I, I swear I'm not crazy. I promise I'm not crazy. That night when she got home, it was back to the normal. Her siblings were yelling, her parents were arguing. She was glad, but she did know what she had to do. Mom, Dad, stop the arguing. We need to talk. About what, sweetie? Yeah, what could be the problem? I really think I need to start seeing somebody. Remember the attack I suffered? Yeah, well, it's taking a toll on me. I, I, need, I need to see somebody. Please, Mom, Dad, let me see somebody. All right, sweetie. We'll find you somebody to see, like a therapist. Now... Get your dinner and go to bed. It's late. I, I'm, I'm really, I'm really not hungry. I'm really, really tired. I should just go to bed. Um, I'll see you guys in the morning, hopefully, if you're not gone by then. Shama walked upstairs to go to bed when she opened the door and realized all the lights were off. The curtains were open. The windows were open. She swore she shut them. She knew she shut them. Maybe, maybe she didn't. It's just all an illusion anyways, right? Right? Oh God, it's worse than I thought. Maybe I'm really, really just going crazy. No, Shia must snuff out of it. Look yourself in the mirror, tell yourself you're okay. You're fine. You're okay. Shama closed her windows, her curtains. She turned on a few lights. And she went to sleep. Out like a light. Out like a body. <laughs> She's so peaceful when she sleeps. It's almost as if we were friends once. The next morning, Shyama woke up. The house was quiet again. That's weird. Normally somebody's still here at this time. Oh well. It's okay. And I honestly don't mind being late for school for once. I need to take 
a rest. She went down into the kitchen, only to see that there was blood everywhere. Shama looked at it. She followed the blood to the fridge. When she'd opened it, there was an animal carcass and a butcher's knife and a note. The note read, you know who you are and you know what you need to do. Shyama just stood there, staring at the note, wondering who put this here. But it was almost like something had taken over. Almost like a new person was in control. Shyama picked up the butcher's knife, grabbed the animal, put it on the counter, and just started chopping and chopping and chopping. And that's when she realized it wasn't an animal. It was a body, but not of somebody she knew, of a stranger. Oh God, they're gonna want me for, for murder. I, what have I done? What? How could I do this? Mom, Dad, where are you? Please, anybody, somebody answer me. I'm here. Who are you? Answer me. Don't just stand there like a coward. Oh. You really don't remember me. Blind Killer steps out of the darkness. It's me, Shyama. Your friend Rose. You're not my friend. You're a freak. Oh. Well, I do need friends. Maybe you could be one of them. It happened way too fast for Shyama to recall. All she remembers is a sharp pain in her face. She awoke. She was still in her kitchen. But there was fresh blood. Not of the animals, but of her own. She was horrified by the fact that maybe there was something wrong with her. She stood up and ran to the bathroom to check the mirror to see if she was okay, and that's when she realized, oh god, it's just like what that man had done to me. I got a fuck, I got a cut on the middle of my face. Why do I have a giant smile? What's happening to me? Why, 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 why? You can be one of us now. Blind Killer, I don't want to be one of you. I, I want to go home. You are home. Blind Killer, why have you done this? Rose, why did you do this? I needed a friend. And now you can be a friend of mine. We can right the planet's wrongs together. Doesn't that just sound great? Rose, I never wanted any of this. What have you turned me into? Into me. You're a spirit like me now, but only more physical. Rose, I never wanted this. I think you'll like your new name. What do you mean, new name? They won't know you by Shyama anymore. They'll know you as Butcher. Have you seen what you've done? What I've done? What do you mean, what have I done? The TV's on. Why don't you take a look? Shyama walked into the living room and looked at the TV. It was on a news channel and it was talking about a brutal murder. And when it showed the victim, it looked as if they had been butchered. She almost just stood there. That's not what a blind killer does. That's, that's not how she works, but, but who? That's when Shyama realized that it wasn't just her blood on her hands, but their blood. But 
Rose, why did you do this? I'm not Rose anymore. I'm Blind Killer. And you're Butcher. Welcome to the team. Why don't you... Smile. Butcher again felt as if... Somebody was taking over. And smiled. But it wasn't just her mouth smiling. It was the cuts along her face that smiled too. They split into four pieces. A giant, gaping mouth was all that was on her face. And now, at night, if you feel heavy breathing, just know you might not wake up the next morning. And on the news, all they'll see is your butchered body.